Baseball on AT&T Sportsnet is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Low fares, no hidden fees, that's transparency. By Buick, visit your local Buick dealer. And by Arctic, overbuilt, not overpriced. Coming up, the Astros offense against the Mariners. Julia Morales will break it down when we come back. In Seattle, but ready to see these Astros turn the page, which was what their message was all spring training to look for a new season. They're going to have to follow that today coming off a couple of tough back to back losses there at home. But the start of a new series against a team we have not seen yet, but a team this crew is very familiar with over the years. In fact, if you look at the numbers, they actually enjoy playing right here in Emerald City. It's our Toyota get out and play as we look back at the Astros against the Mariners. In the last couple of years, going back to 2015, you see the record 37 and 20 against the M. And they were 14 and 5 against this club just last year, and they won their last six straight against the Mariners. So, got a good vibe when they come in and they face these guys, knowing that they can take care of this club. And they're very familiar with some of these pitchers as well. Often, still looking to get going, and we're hoping to see some of that confidence today as they step in a box against a guy that they've seen before several times. This offense was a little inconsistent last year. If you think back to 2017, off to a little bit of a slow start. Jose Altuve struggled earlier in the year. And comparing the two to 2017 and 2018, the runs per game are the same, but the average is actually lower than last year. Strikeouts are way up. Not as many home runs for this club either. But the OPS, 694 compared to the 753 that they had last year. So not getting on base. Not seeing the power that we're used to seeing, but hopefully that all changes today, guys, starting with George Springer at the top. Let's hope it does get turned around, Julia. And Lemery, we had a chance to be observers last night. We didn't televise the game. And we watched this offense be much better than we've seen the first 16 games so far this year, especially lately. Yeah, we got spoiled early on out there in Arlington with the way the guys were swinging the bats. There was a little bit of aggression up there in Arlington, which was great to see. But since that point, it's really been kind of a, a sputtering of offense. We haven't seen that electricity that we're normally seeing. Maybe it has something to do with the cold. Maybe it has something to do with the guys that they're facing. Maybe a little bit might have to do with the approach. But the nice thing for me is watching these guys on a daily basis and being down there around them as they were coming out of the to take batting practice today. They all seem to be in great moods. They understand the talents there. And it's not how you start. It's how you finish. 
Astros got things turned around here in 2017. They're hoping for the same in 2018. And here is your Astros starting lineup presented by Southwest. George Springer enjoys playing against the Mariners. He is facing James Paxton tonight as the leadoff hitter. All righties, including the switch hitter Marwin Gonzalez. Jose Altuve's numbers are on the screen, coming in at 344. Five for 18 against Paxton. Correa, Gurriel, Gaddis, Marwin in left field tonight. Max Stassi catching Dallas Keuchel for a third time this year. And Jake Marisnik is in center field. On the mound, left-hander James Paxton going for the Seattle Mariners. Three starts this season, 15.23 innings pitched. The ERA is inflated. A lot of it has to do with that whip being up around 1.4. Walks still has plenty of strikeouts, but is getting hit around a little bit this season, not creating so much chase. 29 year old delivers a fastball for the first pitch of the night, and it misses just inside. Brian Gorman is our home plate umpire, and the crew chief as George Springer digs in. Coming in batting 203, George tied for the team lead with three home runs. Which has better power numbers against the Mariners than any other team in baseball. 18 home runs and 42 RBIs are both the best against any one team in Springer's career. Two old swings. I like to see it. The velocity is still good from James Paxton. He can get into the mid 90s consistently at that 95. Has virtually eliminated the changeup out of his repertoire. He is a fastball, curveball, slider guy. That one misses in, and that's really been the issue for Paxton this year is the command. When you get up to 19 and a half pitches per inning, you're having issues with the command. Getting to lots of hitters counts, walking more than he usually does. And there's a ball driven deep to left field, and George Springer has started the road trip with a bang. Off the scoreboard, Springer's fourth home run of the year, and the Astros jump in front one nothing. The Eagle has landed. Wow. Julie was right. They like hitting here. They also like hitting in hitters counts and they like hunting the fastball. That is exactly what George Springer did right there. That is more total bases than the Astros had all of last night in one swing for nine innings. Thanks for driving that point home. <laughs> <laughs> they had a double in the eighth and a single in the ninth last night. So three total bases through nine innings against Bartolo Colon, Alex Claudio, and Keona Kella. And tonight, they get four total bases in one swing. Breaking ball in there for a strike, and Bregman in the hole 0 2. George's third home run off James Paxton. Finally, has hit a home run this year off somebody not named Cole Hamels. Now Paxton comes right back and makes quick work of Alex Bregman getting him to strike out on three pitches. Good swing from George. Center cut fastball. He loaded up and unloaded on it. On our mattress firm Supermo, you can see the direct path, and that is a perfectly barreled baseball. 114.5 miles an hour off the bat. 21 degree launch angle, estimated 455. Altuve fouls went out of play. Well, Springer has three of his four leadoff of his home runs this year are leadoff home runs. Opening day. And he got Cole Hamels again the first game of that last homestand. So he's opened up the first road trip, the last homestand, and this road trip with a home run. Thunderous noise and all four home runs this season for George Springer have been off left-handed pitchers. One and one to Altuve. Breaking ball, swing and a miss. First one, he has it into right center. He was going out to right center against Cole Hamels, all three. And this one, he pulled deep over the Mariners' bullpen. To hit that scoreboard on the fly is quite a shot. Yeah, that wasn't a high trajectory. That was a laser. Got out of here in a hurry. Love it when the field mics pick up contact like it did on George's home run. That is force meeting force. Tube goes down swinging. Paxton, after giving up the home run, has come back with a couple of strikeouts. Starting defense tonight for the Mariners is presented by Xfinity. 
From left to right in the outfield, Guillermo Heredia. D. Gordon now is an outfielder. He patrols center. And Mitch Hanniger is in right. Kyle Seeger is over third base. Gene Segura is at short. Robinson Cano and Taylor Motter getting the start at first base. And David Freitas is the catcher. Gordon, like many center fielders, shades Correa a little bit the other way as Carlos digs in there against Paxton. Carlos has four consecutive hits matching up with the Seattle left-hander. Overall, six for 16 in his career against Paxton. Springer starts the Astros off with a home run. A couple of strikeouts from Paxton now facing Correa. Ooh. Tell you what, early on, the strike zone is benefiting the Astros. We haven't seen that too much throughout the course of the season. I know we might be a little bit biased up here, but I feel like the strike zone has affected the way the Astros attack the baseball. Hey, the power of the head being gone. Good pitch. And that's the slider from James Paxton. 87 to 89 miles an hour. I, acts like a cutter, but still some good movement coming across the plate. Okay, yeah, I'm just saying, like, I think once you get down there, you'll see that the power is pretty much a nice No chase there from Carlos, and the count's full. Okay, sounds good. I'll head back up. Um, all right, well, I'm going to leave the box open. Correa coming in, leading the team in RBIs with a dozen, leading the team in runs scored with that same number. Astros trying to. Win a series. It's been a little while. They've lost two out of three to Minnesota and lost two out of three to the Rangers. Overall, they have lost four of their last five games. Astros winning on Friday night at Minute Maid Park, three to two against Texas, and then we're leading five to nothing in the middle game of that series. The following day, you had Justin Verlander against Bartolo Colon. Up five in that middle game, they still ended up losing that series. This ball is in the center field. On comes D. Gordon, still coming. He won't quite get there. He plays it on a hop and keeps it in front of him. As Carlos Correa now has five consecutive hits against James Paxton, Paxton and Gordon's testing out that leg after kind of an awkward attempt at that line drive. It looks like Heredia is replacing his divot. Off the bat, and this is going to be the tough transition for D. Gordon out there. He's reading that ball right at him, but you can see a little bit of a stumble on the turf. It's not good. Need your wheels out there in center field, but seems to be okay. And then you're trying, you're trying to read the baseball at you, and you're trying to read the swing. That was a big swing from Carlos. Ended up being a changeup. He doesn't throw that pitch much anymore. No. Ever. Carlos was able to stay with it. On the opposite end of the spectrum against Paxton is Yuli, just one for 11 in his career against the Mariners left hander. Last year 24 starts for Paxton a couple of stints on the DL. On the DL for the month of May with a forearm strain and then. For about a month from August 11th to September 14th with a strained left pectoral muscle. Sub three ERA though in those 24 starts. Up and into Yuli it's two and one. Yuli going to get a heater right here. Dangerous, but say a good chance. But yeah, it is dangerous. Nope. Two one count. He gets that slider and misses it. It's two and two. If he can command that pitch in a hitter's count, that'll definitely benefit him. <laughs> the fans can't a up there in the Paxton section. Whenever he gets to two strikes, Guriel on the ground to Segura, and he will get the force at second. Cano covering. Astros jump on board first. It's always nice when you got a guy at the top who can drop the thunder early here in the Great Northwest. Astros on the board, one nothing.
their home run to start this game, lead it one to nothing, and they have handed that lead off to Dallas Keuchel. Dallas Keuchel is a guy who normally gets off to some fast starts. We talked about how he was a main key in the Astros getting off to that great start last season here, a little bit slower in April, but that's okay. Three other guys in that rotation are picking him up. Just a matter of time before hopefully Dallas gets back into position where he needs to be in getting a lot of hitters to hit a lot of ground balls and get a lot of outs. As you can see with the cooler temperatures tonight. Pitchers allowed to blow into that pitching hand while on the mound. D Gordon the new Mariner right back to Dallas Keuchel. And the guy who won three consecutive gold glove awards had no problem with that one one out and that's a good start. Mariners lineup they've been really good especially the top six in their order this year. We saw D Gordon leading off Gene Segura is the shortstop Robinson Cano a 375 start to the season Nelson Cruz healthy again Kyle Seager at third base Mitch Hanniger has had a nice start to his season he's in right Guillermo Heredia Taylor Motter and David Freitas round out your M's lineup. Segura coming in batting 327 after a season in which he hit an even 300. Love how Stassi frames that pitch. One and one to count. A lot of hot starts right at the top of their lineup. Big numbers. On that 1 0 pitch, Stassi is almost bringing the glove up as the pitch is coming home, where he times it out. So that he catches it in one motion. The pitch looks like it's about four or five inches higher than where it really is. Ground ball towards the hole. Correa was angled over towards the middle. That arm. Wow. He guns down Segura by a couple of steps, and Gene Segura takes a look over his shoulder and said, I know you have a good arm, but that's impressive. You know, Gene Segura was out by a good two steps. Watch him plant. That is catch and throw in one motion and throw a seed. Gene Segura is not even in the frame. Sometimes you just got to sit back and enjoy the performance these guys put on. That was an excellent play by Carlos Correa, planting his feet and showing off the showing off the canyon. Now Keiko facing Cano, and Robinson takes a strike. Cano off to a big start, second in the American League and batting average and an on base percentage you see the big numbers early for him. I think Carlos Correa is really focused in not that he wasn't before but he really was focused in on improving himself defensively and he has looked outstanding in the early part of the season. That last play was one of the better ones because of what you said how quick he was glove to throw. Well he was cheating on that last pitch it was a fastball away to Robinson Cano and he was leaning to his right so he's anticipating ball but also I think the experience that, that Carlos Correa is picking up he's a young athletic man and he goes out there and plays athletically but now I think with all the repetitions he's getting at shortstop he's starting to understand how he can put himself in better positions to make plays more consistently. And he knows with Keichel he's going to be busy out there. Keichel gets so many ground balls. Correa another opportunity. This one a little easier. And Dallas with a strong start. Three ground balls to start this one. It's one nothing Astros.
by GMC. A little bit different outfield look for the Seattle Mariners. They picked up D. Gordon in a trade from Miami. He is a second baseman now playing center field and doing a pretty good job at it, too. He is a high-speed guy trying to work on the in instincts out there in center field, but so far early on, proven to be a pretty good asset out there in center field. And that's what the Mariners have wanted to try and do over the last couple of years. 2017, they put a lot of emphasis on that defense out in the outfield, a lot of fly ball pitchers. And there you can see the defensive runs saved, according to fan graphs, plus five in 2017. But you want to see it on the positive side because 15 and 16, not so good. There were some holes out there in the outfield and hits to be had. That's gone from a big weakness on this team to one of their strengths. As Evan Gaddis bats against James Paxton here in the second inning. You saw D. Gordon looking at that card too. When you're on the infield, you're usually shifted by uh, the bench coach. You can hear the verbal cues a little easier. When you're in the outfield, you're on your own a little more often. Now Gordon will move over towards left field, but it's the left fielder Heredia who makes the play. Just like that, you get to see some of the speed out there. Guillermo Heredia got a great jump off the bat. So I'll bring up Marwin Gonzalez. A little slow start with the batting average early for Marwin, batting at 176. He's hitting the exact same right handed and left handed this year. But over his career, he's hit the Mariners well 310 with 14 home runs against Seattle and 226 at bats. Takes a pitch for a ball, 1 0. We saw Paxton at his best early on last year. He was filthy. Dominant dotting the fastball in the mid 90s on both sides of the plate. Slider's proven to be a pretty good weapon, too. There's that fastball for a strike. It's one and one. And I think a lot of it had to do with the command that you mentioned earlier. He was ahead in the count early on and allowed him to get to those secondary pitches. Some evidence for the good slider. Slider right there. Breaks it over for a strike. It's one and two. Last year, Paxton started out the year with two starts against the Astros and threw 13 innings of shutout baseball and six hits. Marwin into center field. Gordon gets over there. He doesn't like staying on his feet after the catch all the time as he goes down with a slide, and there's two away. As you enjoy a cold one, look forward to the Miller Lite hold true moment later in tonight's game. It's giving those Mariners grounds crew some extra work out there. Yeah, he's leaving some divots, isn't he? He goes back to that card to look to see where to play for Max Stassi. Stassi fouls one out of play. Maybe it's more of a braking system. So he doesn't have to run further? Yeah. Just. <laughs> you see guys do that on the base pads. You don't see him <laughs> doing the outfield very often. <laughs> The bat will match Stassi's mark of last year with 24 ABs. Max hitting at 304. Catching Keiko for the third time in Dallas's four starts. It's more circumstantial than anything else. AJ doesn't have a set lineup for pitcher catcher, although it seems like whenever Justin Verlander has pitched, Brian McCann has been behind the plate. And since Dallas follows. Verlander in the rotation. Stassi has been that guy in three of his four starts. And a swing and a miss. Oh, Paxton with a one, two, three inning. We head to the bottom of the second. It's one nothing Astros.
tripping. It was a lot of fun to watch on our MD Anderson strike zone. Watch the cluster of pitches. Two pitches in the zone against D. Gordon and the great pitches down the zone to get the rollover from Gene Segura. This one elevated a little bit, but in the strike zone and with two strikes and getting ahead in the count, he's able to do what he does well, and that is get ground balls. And with that clean inning, Dallas Keuchel now has 1,000 and two-thirds innings pitched as a Houston Astro. Wow. Correa down to a knee, and Cruz hits the ball hard, but in the wrong spot. Correa's been busy early in this one as he has made three consecutive assists on ground balls, although that was more of a line drive. Yeah, ball hit hard, but it turns into an out. Thankfully, Correa, you can see him kind of giving that face like, wow, ball got to me in a hurry, but still made a great play. Another ground ball out for Dallas Keuchel, but Dallas Keuchel is now the 16th Astros pitcher to get to that 1,000 inning pitch plateau, fifth left-hander in Astros hist history. Congrats to Dallas Keuchel on that accomplishment. I saw Correa take that glove off and that hand stings a little bit after a line drive like that. Well, it was only coming at him at about 116.4 miles an hour. Seriously? Yep. Ooh. According to our stat cast numbers. That is. That's moving. That is one of the highest numbers we've seen all year. Well, it's 47 degrees at game time, and it's not going to get warmer as the night goes along. And it's one of those areas where the water is right here, the sound's right down the road. It's a damp, cold night. Yes. If that makes sense, with the roof being closed. It still has that damp, cold feel to it. I'm sure Julia will be able to chime in on that later. She is down a little more in the elements than we are. It's one and two to Kyle Seeger. Dallas going with the three quarter sleeves on this chilly night. This is outside, it's two and two. Dallas. Thought he would reach that thousand inning plateau in his last start, but he only lasted four innings. He walked four and threw 101 pitches in that start against the Twins in four innings. Four walks is unusual for Dallas, and he's done that two starts in a row. And as you see, he's in the top five in pitches per inning, which is kind of the flip of where you expect Dallas to be. He's usually one of the lowest pitches per inning guys. Yeah, that first inning is what we're normally seeing. Pitches on the edges, pitching to contact, using the defense. Time Stassi tried to bring it up into the zone and got no call from Gorman. Now the count's full on Seeger. Call third strike. Seeger thought he had drawn the walk, and Gorman sends him back to the dugout. First strikeout for Keichel. I think Seeger's going to go back and watch the video and just tip his cap to Dallas Keuchel. Catch all the excitement at Minute Maid Park this season with matchups against rivals like the Yankees, Red Sox, Rangers, and Indians. All single game tickets are available at Astros.com slash tickets or call 1-877-9-ASTROS. One of those games sold out in a hurry today. For single game tickets. I wonder why. <laughs> Here's Mitch Hanniger. Hanniger tied for the league lead in RBIs coming into today. He did a good job filling in when Nelson Cruz was hurt. The Astros announcing today, this morning, that they were going to give fans a second opportunity to pick up that replica ring, the World Championship ring that was so popular last Saturday or a couple Saturdays ago. They announced it will be June 20th against the Tampa Bay Rays. And before we went on the air tonight, every one of those seats had sold out. Everybody gets a ring. Everybody gets a ring for that promotion. It's not limited to 10,000. And Wednesday, June 20th is a very popular date for Astros fans as they jumped all over that. So second opportunity if you were in line and didn't get a chance to get a ring that day and the good news is you don't have to get there as early as you did the first day because <laughs> everybody that walks into the stadium will be getting a ring Mitch Hanniger looks at a call third strike Dallas off to a great start four ground balls two strikeouts it's one nothing Astros.
to give the Astros their one run so far today and offense looking good so far as as far as that is concerned putting that run up early is what they wanted to do but AJ did talk about the last 10 days that they struggled and knowing they were going to face a guy like James Paxson who they have to stay in the zone against and not chase uh, that's really been the talk of these guys not chasing pitches but also the take something that Blummer I know you you touched on earlier that AJ said inopportune take so I mean these these two working hand in hand if they're taking pitches that they should be hitting then they're chasing the ones that are out of the zone. So it's been kind of a bad mix for the Astros in those last 10 games or so. No, I completely agree, Julia. And we've seen a little more passive offense from the Houston Astros. Last year was a little more of selective aggressiveness where they were really attacking the strike zone. And here early on, we, of course, we see Jake chase a slider down out of the zone and then taking a fastball. But that's the thing. You've got to go up there with the right mentality, pick a pitch in a zone, and go. don't be afraid to attack it. Well, Paxton was on the attack in that at bat as he strikes out Marisnik on three pitches. No player does more presented by H.E.B. George Springer. Against the Seattle Mariners last year had quite a season. Yeah if you like doing damage he definitely did it against Seattle. Six home runs. Now 19 career home runs against the Mariners, most against any team. 43 runs batted in. And he crushed that first pitch. Not the first pitch, but in his first at bat, he crushed that pitch by James Paxton over the left center field wall, hit the scoreboard. Now he's got a hitter's count, 2 0. Oh. And I think a lot of fans at home that do watch a lot of Astros games. Is they like to command the zone so they have been taking some pitches borderline or off the edge but the zone has kind of expanded a little bit and we've seen some pitches called for strikes off the plate and as, as a hitter when you start to recognize that you start to expand your zone and say I've got to defend that so you're going to expand your strike zone and maybe lose a little bit of that strike zone that you normally have such a good idea about. Last night, not to take anything away from Bartolo Colon, that was a magnificent performance and equally impressive was Justin Verlander on the other side. But Colon was getting a lot of those outside pitches to right handers called a strike. We saw Jake late in the game, 3 1 count. Pitch it could have been ball four, and Jake took it for a strike and then ended up striking out for the final out of the game. George Paxson was pretty careful with him, ends up drawing a walk with one out in the third. First, Six games, pretty good. Yeah, they were. Last 10, Blummer, not so good. And I really wish we had an explanation for you. It's just early in the season, so a 10 game sample size isn't a lot, but it's enough to show you that they have kind of spiraled a little bit. The on base percentage has gone way down. Sub 300 for the Houston Astros, as far as on base percentage, is unheard of. These guys know the strike zone, they usually work walks and work pitchers and smash mistakes in the zone, but we haven't seen that in the last 10 games. At 580 OPS in the last 10 games is the lowest in baseball since April 4th. This is an Astros team that's used to being number one in baseball, not number 30. The 1 0 pitch is grounded towards short. Slowly hit. They get one. Bregman safe at first. Got the force on George, but Bregman beat the relay throw. Am I the only one that was kind of curious to see that there was no effort to slide into second base from George Springer? This ball's not hit that hard. An opportunity to get in there and maybe disrupt Cano, but Alex Bregman hustling through first makes himself safe. Extend this inning, force the Mariners to get another out. We'll see if the Astros can take advantage with Jose Altuve. We saw in the frame George peeling off, not going into the bag. It's so different now than it was certainly when you were turning double plays. Yeah, maybe there's no point to slide in there. Ball into right field. That will send Hanniger back. He's at the track. He is at the wall, and he leaps and makes the catch. Altuve bidding for his first home run of the year, sent it all the way to the wall, but it's just a long out. Astros lead 1 0 heading to the bottom of the third.
score by downloading the new AT&T Sportsnet app from iTunes or Google Play or visit attsportsnet.com to stream on your computer. Log in with your cable account and you are all set. Available for those with AT&T Sportsnet in their TV subscription. Blackouts and other territorial restrictions apply. Dallas Keuchel gets back to work looking for his first win of the season and tonight I think we're looking for that first pitch strike guys and for him to just be the aggressor be aggressive on the mound. This is a guy that that can pitch really well when things are working for him but lately it's almost too much is what I'm hearing so more throwing less pitching that makes any sense. Yuli gets the tag on her radio on an off balance throw by Correa nicely done on both ends. Carlos getting tested early on. Nice to have Yuli back. Made a great adjustment on this throw. Heredia runs well, and Carlos had to rush that a little bit. Speaking of first pitch strikes, pitch in the zone, Heredia rolls it over, and Carlos Correa rolling to his right has to get rid of it in a hurry. But I just like the early adjustment from Yuli Guriel to go out there and get him, tagging him on that right calf. Correa already with four assists. Two of them have been excellent plays. And Julie is right. Dallas pounding the zone early, trying to get quick outs. Now facing Taylor Motter. Motter hits the ball hard in the left field, and that's the first hit of the night for the Mariners. Motter with a one out single after Kaiko retired the first seven. I think the thing with Dallas that we saw in the first three starts was. A combination of things. He obviously was not attacking like we have seen him in the past. And that was obvious with the results of four walks in each of his last two starts. But I also think he pitched in some bad luck during that stretch, too. And first pitch strikes has been an issue. Yeah, it's down by just mere percentage points, but still below 60. You'd like to see that number in that 2016 range at 63%. The end zone strike percentage is down a full point from last year, also. But the interesting number for me is the chase percentage. He is not creating that chase percentage here early on in the season, which is so effective for Dallas with that sinker that looks like a strike for so long and then sinks off the plate. And that cut fastball that starts inside the right handed hitters looks like a good pitch to hit until they start to swing and then cuts in off the plate and creates the chase. I think you're dead on with that. And, and the problem being is because Dallas is so fine with his control when he's ahead of the count. Now hitter has to expand a little bit and be a little more aggressive aggressive and protect and if you're if you're looking to defend and that pitch looks like a strike for a long time you're going to start to get that barrel out there maybe too soon and now that he's been working behind in the count some hitters have been taking some close pitches and getting the benefit of the calls getting the benefit of the calls and it's also affording that of forcing Dallas to throw more of the fastballs this season fastball percentage has been up so now he's at one and two. David Freitas, he can look for a ground ball to try and get out of the inning or the strikeout, and he gets the strikeout. And for Dallas, that's now three strikeouts to go along with five ground ball outs. It's a great changeup. The changeup is looking good early on for Dallas also. Good arm action. We're actually seeing a little more of an aggressive arm action coming towards home plate. Now Dallas will face the top of the order. D. Gordon, who grounded right back to Keuchel his first time up. This one is towards the stands and a long run for Mar when he runs out of room. And as competitive as Keuchel is, you know he has seen all these other guys in rotation go out and do their thing. The Garrett Coles and the Verlanders last few starts and Charlie Morton. And he's like, all right. I got to get I got to get back to what I normally do in April which is dominate that first month of the season. Absolutely. And again we talk about being spoiled and watching this ball club but we're we're accustomed to seeing Dallas Keuchel very good in April. And so far he has been very very good tonight. He has faced 10 batters only one has reached base. Another ground ball out six ground ball outs and three strikeouts for Dallas.
Bowl. Remember to follow us on Twitter at ATT Sportsnet SW, which Astros players offense offense is most critical to the team success. All right, we have George Springer, Jose Altuve, Carlos Correa, or is it someone else? Tweet at us. We'll let you know who wins the poll later in the broadcast, TK. Here's one of the choices leading off Carlos Correa taking a pitch outside for a ball. It's one and zero. Carlos another base hit against James Paxton his last time up five in a row for Carlos overall in his career seven for 17 against the Canadian lefty. Makes a pitch down low it's two and zero. Oh. Paxton probably feels comfortable out there with the feels like temperature of 39 right now. I'm not sure if the same could be said for Julia or us. Yeah. We're in a better spot but it's still not exactly comfortable. Players are wearing ski caps during BP today. Some of them still wearing them in the dugout. How is it down there, Julia? It's chilly. <laughs> Did you have a technical malfunction down there? <laughs> Y'all, I might get kicked out. <laughs> okay. What'd you do now? <laughs> so, okay, do I have a second? I brought a space heater and a heating pad. I'm being real quiet, like I don't want the Safeco and field employees <laughs> to hear me. But I brought them down here, plugged them in. And then the lights went out, so I blew a fuse, I think, in my area. Wow. Um, a, an electrician came down to check it out. I was, and they're investigating, I think, what's what's happened down here. So I had to hide all my <laughs> warm stuff. <laughs> I just got to grind grind through this one today. Figure out a heat situation tomorrow. 3-1 pitch. Correa goes the other way. I thought that space heater was for the booth. <laughs> no, you guys have a heater <laughs> already up there. <laughs> I wanted to borrow it for the night and it yeah. blew up on me literally. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> you could be in trouble. <laughs> it's a little chilly though. I hope they don't ask us to be witnesses. <laughs> <laughs> Three two to Correa is out of play. Yeah we're gamers up here tonight windows open. That was not the case at, at uh, Target Field in Minnesota. Yeah, wanted no part of that cold. This was supposed to be the coolest night of the four in Seattle. It's not going to be very warm when we go to Chicago this weekend. Call third strike. Paxton gets Correa looking. Well, Paxton now has five strikeouts as he starts out to fourth by getting one on Correa. You may have heard in the background after that strikeout a screeching eagle. Yep. Big Maple, the Canadian, had an issue with a bald eagle opening day in Minnesota. At Target Field, where the Astros were right after the Mariners on that last road trip. Paxton was getting ready to warm up for that start, and Captain America was on the attack. And I, I am thoroughly impressed with Paxton's ability to keep his cool. That would have been in the fetal position. He said there was really nothing he could do at that point. Fans out there all have their Eagles sticks and the A's whenever they get to two strikes said I wasn't going to outrun the Eagle. Yeah. So he just wore it literally. <laughs> <laughs> two and two his first start back here at Safeco since that outing in Minneapolis. Now they start chanting A up there in the left field bleachers on the 2 2 pitch. And it's about out of play. But you may hear Eagle sounds after a strikeout tonight at Safeco Field. Three and two. Pretty good take. 2 2 slider down. Seen a couple of chases on that pitch. Yuli not going for it, giving himself an extra pitch, maybe get a mistake going to the slider. Yuli bouncing one foul, staying alive at three and two. Yuli just coming back for the three game series against the Rangers. Got the DH yesterday. There's the crowd. Up close and personal shot of that group. And didn't work out for them that time as Yuli ends up drawing the walk. Guriel, a one out base runner for the Astros in the fourth. Give back to the Houston community by joining the Astros Foundation Volunteer Corps. Take part in volunteering on game day at Minute Maid Park. Help with craft parties at local hospitals and much more. Visit Astros.com slash volunteer to sign up now. 
see if Evan Gaddis can get going. This is a guy he's had success against in his career. He's six for 19 coming into tonight. A soft line drive to left his first time up. Evan getting a chance to be the regular DH. And there's nothing worse when you're the DH early in the season. Gives you time to think about things and you're struggling a little bit as Evan is with that average of 191. Evan takes one down and in. It's 2-0. and oh. Evan still gets his reps behind the plate, but he has not yet caught a game this season. Astros going with three catchers this year. Max Stassi, Brian McCann, and Evan Gaddis. Evan now in a hitter's count. Out of play, it's 2-1. Astros starting the night at 10 and 6. Trailing the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, who are off tonight by three games. Angels with a 13 and 3 start to their season. Mariners are in third at 8 and 5. Yeah. Two and two to count. Benches all lefties tonight. Derek Fisher, Brian McCann, Josh Reddick all with the night off against the lefty James Paxton. Foul ball just to our right and above the radio booth. Our windows are open. Yeah, I would have had to have made a play on that if it was a little bit more to the left and shallow. If that ball was heading towards the Astros radio booth, it would not have gone in. Maybe that's why it knocked it down. Maybe it hit the windows that they have closed over there in the 75 degree atmosphere they're calling the game from. <laughs> two pitch in the third. Three Not to two. throw anybody under the bus. Oh, if we had the option, we probably would be doing the same thing. Speaking of buses, <laughs> three and two. <laughs> so if Julia, about, Julia needs to warm up, she can go in the radio booth tonight. How about speaking of buses? How about the scary moment for, oh, there they are. Yep. The great trio. Look at it. polo shirts. It's like a pleasant afternoon. Coming in hot. Ooh, that one man a... tried to catch that ball. Did he try and catch it or save his teeth? Maybe one of, yeah, maybe the latter. He's probably looking for his fingers right now. Oh, Steve Sparks, Robert Ford, and Matt right, Bolt. That guy right there. <laughs> that guy tried to catch it. And his friends were like, really? <laughs> It was an abbreviated swing, but the ball came flying off Evans bat and then ouch. Yeah, that's not going to feel good. It's not going to he's not going to have feeling in that thing for about a week. There goes the runner and the pitch is fouled actually towards our way just below us. Where's uh, the fishnet when I need it, right? <laughs> but I was going on the, to the bus uh, tangent because the well, that's right. The there Royals was terrible in Toronto. Unbelievable coming into Toronto last night. Their game was postponed tonight. Toronto's at having some cold ice issues, but the bus incident, that is frightening. Ice flying off one bus, hitting the windshield of the other bus. The one of the players had to grab the steering wheel and right the ship. That ball is well hit, but he pulled foul. Blaine Boyer with a great save as glass was everywhere as the second team bus took a hit from ice from the first team bus as they were heading into Toronto and ice falling from the CN Tower actually did damage to the Rogers Center and they had to postpone the game today. Unbelievable. Between the Royals and the Blue Jays. Fortunately everybody with the Royals okay after that scary moment. Evan with an extended at bat here has seen a lot of pitches. There goes the runner again. Evan hits it slowly towards short. By moving the runner they will stay out of the potential double play. Segura makes the play to first. And Yuli now in scoring position with two outs. Well, baby steps for Evan, but that's a pretty good A-B there against a tough lefty. It's actually good to see him get the head out and yank some of those balls foul. So often early in the season, we've seen him getting jammed, going the other way, trying to fight pitches off, but eventually getting that barrel rolling through the zone will get him right. 
Here's Marwin. He lined out to center field his first time up. Astros have two hits, both in the first inning. A home run by Springer to start the game. And then Carlos Correa singled in that same inning. The Springer leadoff home run set a mark here in Safeco Field, huh? Yeah, it did. He has four career leadoff home runs now here in Safeco Field, breaking a previous record held by Grady Sizemore. Grady Sizemore had three now. George Springer has four leadoff home runs. The longer he stays in that top spot, the more records he'll be breaking along the way. Most all time at this venue by a visiting player. I know, by the way, he's going to be coming through here a couple more times throughout the next couple of years. Up that bar even more. Good count here for Marwin, 2 0. And now it's 3 0. Well, Paxton is being selective. He has not shown Marwin too much in this at bat. Max Stassi waits on deck. Now they're going to go out and talk about things in this 3 0 count. Freitas and Paxton with a little mound visit and a 3 0 count to Marwin. First base is open. A little early in the game to be pitching around a guy, but you've fallen behind 3 0. One more pitch puts him on, and then you can go after Max Stassi. But Max Stassi, you make a mistake. He's been taking advantage of the opportunities he's had. They do give him a pitch to hit on the 3 0, and he grounds it to third. Seeger makes the play cross, and that'll do it for the Astros in the fourth. A walk, one man left on base, still 1 0 Astros. Fan, use hashtag ultimate SW fan NTX on Twitter to show us that you could win a VIP experience. North Texas, April is your chance to show your spirit, so tweet now and win big. Gene Segura leads off, and Dallas Keuchel has been painting a little picture early by dotting up some strikes, and there's a first one to Gene Segura for a called strike. We saw both pitchers in charge last night. As Segura pops one high in the air on the infield, Guriel and Altuve converge. It's Jose who takes control, and there's one away. Dan in North Texas tweeting in tonight. Please hold. 
Oh, no way. Sweet ride. Got the Astros logo on the front of his Harley. Wow, that's pretty. That's a solid ride right there. Off the plate, way up in the air. Yuli's going to flip it to Dallas, and Dallas covers in time to get Cano. So Cano bounces one off the plate. It almost stayed in the air long enough for him to beat it out. Take on today is presented by AARP. Nelson Cruz, career numbers against Dallas Keuchel are healthy. To say the least, 323 and three bombs. In that previous AB, Nelson Cruz hit the hardest ball of the after or the evening at 116.4. But a great play by Carlos Correa. Stunk Carlos's glove hand for a little while. And it's only been one ball that's reached the outfield tonight from the Mariners, and that was a single that. Marvin Gonzalez fielded off the bat of Taylor Motter. All the putouts have been a strikeout or on the infield. And Keichel ahead of Cruz 0 2. Nice little cutter. Keeping it on the plate, too. Joined the Mariners on Saturday. Had been on the 10 day DL after spraining his ankle. Slipped on some stairs here at Safeco Field. Two and two the count. Shouldn't have that problem with those moon boots he's wearing now. Unique look. Boomstick, they call him. Back to his Texas days. 39 home runs last year, 119 runs driven in. And this ball is crushed to left field, and this ball is gone. Just like that, Nelson Cruz ties it up. That is his third home run of the season, and we're not at one. Couple of solo home runs in this ball game here. It seemed like the location was terrible. It just went down and got it. Down in the zone is where Dallas likes to live, but Nelson Cruz proving that big man like him can go down and get it too and golf it out of here. 103.6 miles an hour off the bat. Kyle Seeger fouls one. And there are just some guys that you see the ball better off than most. And that just happens to be one of the guys for Dallas Keuchel. Mattress Firm Supermo shows the swing, being patient. Actually looked lower from the center field camera than it did that camera right there. I know the angle is a little more adjusted, but really didn't look like Nelson Cruz had to go down to get that pitch. Yep. I agree with you. That's a relatively steep angle for a hitter to come after a baseball, yet he's still able to get out in front and clip it and get a good launch angle out of it. From the angle you saw, you could see Stassi start to bring the ball up because he thought it was going to be down and it was pretty low in the zone. Yeah, not terrible, but a good job by Nelson Cruz. House is going to get another ground ball out here. Correa with another assist as Kyle Seeger grounds one into the shift. But a solo home run by Cruz has tied this game at one.
Callis, Jeff Blum, Julia Morales, Astros and Mariners tied at one. Home run by George Springer to start the game and a home run last half inning by Nelson Cruz has tied it. During this last series where the Astros lost two out of three to the Rangers, the three starting pitchers all got no decisions. And they all deserve big W's. Garrett Cole, seven innings, 14 strikeout baseball, allowed a couple of solo home runs. Charlie Morton, six innings, allowed a couple of solo home runs, 12 strikeouts. Justin Verlander, eight innings, one hit baseball, one run allowed, 11 strikeouts. They all ended up with no decisions because the offense just hasn't been there. That is true, and I think that's why you're hearing a lot of agents not bring wins and losses into arbitration arbitration cases because you can put up phenomenal numbers like those guys did with the massive punch out numbers and not have a win to show for it, which is amazing. But it has everything to do with the lack of offensive support coming into this game. Just looking at Dallas Keuchel's run support, which has been limited over the years, it feels like 1.8 runs in his first three starts. So that's tough to pitch to. Usually it's a solo home run by Cruz and you feel like you can work around that but last night it was a solo home run by Robinson Chirinos and Verlander was never ahead in that game after that. A two pitch on the corner. Max Stassi goes down looking. He wasn't sure if that was too far in. Brian Gorman said it caught the plate. And that is strikeout number six for James Paxton. Fastball up and in. Caught part of the edge. Paxton has walked a couple tonight to go along with the six strikeouts. And he misses on the first one to Jake Marisnik. Each one of his starts this year, four and two, two thirds in his opener, five innings in his second start, and six innings in his most recent start in Kansas City. That one one bounces up there, and Jake goes around. It's one and two. That was a little more traditional curveball from James Paxton. We haven't seen too many. One just bow. Got a mistake elevated and he did hit it hard. I mean, that's one as a pitcher you feel like you just dodged a bullet. He made yeah, you got out of the hand, it feels like it's just fluttering out there for about 10 minutes for the hitter to see. In the previous pitch, he made him look bad on a breaking ball, so he didn't necessarily need to throw one as good as he did there. One two pitch. Jake stays alive. That's a cut fastball. Vary the speeds on that cutter to turn it into a slider. Less less velocity equals more break. If he's trying to set up that fastball inside, much like we saw him punch out Max Stassi on. In the dirt, Jake holds up two and two. We see the pitch count starting to build a little bit on the lefty Paxton. Even though he's only allowed two hits tonight, he's at 86 pitches in the fifth inning. And he gets Marisma. Seven strikeouts, two outs in the fifth. Baseball on tap presented by Budweiser returns to Minute Maid Park on April 27th with a special ticket. Fans can enjoy beer tastings, live music, games, and more. For tickets and info, visit Astros.com slash baseball on tap. Here's George Springer, and off the end of the bat, Springer has himself a base hit. He has been on base all three times, a home run, a walk, and now a two-out single. That's a peach, huh? Yeah. <laughs> that was not... Exactly what he had planned, but it worked out fine. Equally as happy about it. Hanging breaking ball, took a big swing on it, trying to crush it. Instead, gets it off the end of the bat, breaks the bat. 
goes down a hero because it ends up being a base hit. Here's Alex Bregman facing Paxton for the third time, and he swings and fouls one away. Alex has gotten a couple of fastballs in his first couple ABs, just missing them early in the counts. Just a click off. It'd be a great spot mentally. Great spot that up the middle of the other way mentality on that heater from James Paxton. This section right here, you can see there's plenty of space between D. Gordon and Mitch Hanniger. Not only does that look good as a hitter, but mentally it tells your swing to wait and let that ball travel a little bit too. There goes Springer, slowly hit ground ball past Paxton. Seeger bare hand throws in time to get Bregman. Alex tells AJ, you may want to look at that again. But that was a really nice play by Seeger if it stands. That was a great play by Seeger. Swinging bunt, doing a great job charging in, barehanding and throwing on an icy night here in Seattle. AJ waiting for the call back from the boys up in the video room. AJ is going to have him take another look at it. Good idea. Good hustle by Alex Bregman on our match firm Super Mo. You can see what a great bounce. Catch and release. Safe. It's funny because after Alex motioned to the dugout to take a look at it, he actually turned left a little bit. Mm. And if the Mariners had seen it at the time, they could have tried to tag him just to, as a possibility. I mean, it, it wasn't an attempt to go to second base, but sometimes umpires call this. Watch him go down the line right there. Yeah, he turned into the inside part of the diamond. You're right. But he's on that replay. Looks like they may have a case here. I think they're going to overturn it. Here's another look, Blummer. Tell us what you think. Well, according to our matches from Supermo, I'm trying to see where the baseball gets in the back of the glove, but foot is on the bag for me, and then you don't see the reaction of the ball in the glove until after that foot's on the bag. Oh, wow. I didn't see that coming. Don't think that one could be confirmed. That had to be a stand, but we'll get the, yep, there it is, call stands. 1-1, one, one. head to the bottom of the fifth. One-one game, bottom half of the fifth inning. A lot of Astros fans in attendance tonight at Safeco Field in Seattle. 
first of three straight night games afternoon contests on Thursday then off to Chicago to take on the White Sox as Mitch Hanniger fouls one back to the screen. We mentioned that Paxton was up a little bit in his pitch count. He finished the fifth inning with 91 pitches. Dallas Keiko on the other hand has thrown half as many. He started the inning with 45 pitches through four innings. Facing six, seven, and eight in this inning, Mitch Hanniger, Guillermo Heredia, and Taylor Motter. Well, the pitches per inning, Blummer, look pretty good tonight. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> Especially considering last time was 101 and four. Both the string there, one and two. Changeup is filthy. Arm action's good. The downward break on it also. The depth is good. Hanniger struck out looking his first time up. Almost chases there, but lays off. It's two and two. Only a Nelson Cruz home run. Stands in the way of Dallas having every hitter keep the ball in the infield tonight. With the exception of the Taylor Motter single and the Cruz home run. All ground outs and strikeouts and a pop up on the infield. Dallas has been living in the bottom third of the zone like he does when he's successful. And when he's getting ahead early in these counts like we're seeing it forces those hitters to get into swing mode and that benefits Dallas Keuchel. Ground ball with three on the left side of the infield. Bregman bobbles momentarily recovers and makes a nice throw to get the first out of the inning. Watch every out of market Astros game all season long live on your favorite supported devices with MLB.tv. Blackout and other restrictions do apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Dallas last year posted a career high in ground ball rate at 67.3%. Tonight he has nine ground ball outs, three strikeouts, and one pop up. And he gets another ground ball. Correa two hops his throw is <laughs> offline a little bit but Curiel made the tag Yuli's done that twice today with Heredia running it was the same exact play Heredia had in his first AB right down to the tag by Yuli coming off the back it was bizarre it almost looked like Yuli could have stayed on the bag but he didn't want to take any chance and almost blasted his wrist in doing so this is tough you want to catch and get that tag, but that wrist sometimes can be jarred a little bit, and it looked like it did right there on Yuli. Still working that thing out. Let's see him back. Fractured handmade bone cost him first couple of weeks of the season. Taylor Motter, the batter, takes a good breaking ball for a strike 0 1. Now let's drop it in that curve at 77 miles an hour. Go back to back with the curveball. This one just misses the corner. It's one and one. Remember the movie Sandlot? Yep. PF Flyers. There you go. I thought they had a little reunion with the Sandlot crew the other day. Three ground balls. This one to Bregman. Bregman, Correa, Bregman. Dallas in control. He is through five, having thrown just 55 pitches.
ATT Sportsnet SW and vote in our poll. We gave you this question earlier today. Here's what you said to which Astros players offense is the most critical to the team's success. Jose Altuve is going to win tonight with 43% of the vote. George Springer coming in second with 30. TK. Yeah, pretty split up all the way around. Yeah, I, I know who I'm going to pick and I'm going to hold off before or who I would have picked in that in that stroll poll. I'm going to hold off because he pretty good chance he's going to hit in this inning next. OK. But Altuve, of course, he's a, he's important to this offense, but he is always putting up 340 plus numbers. It's the other guys, those complimentary guys around Jose Altuve. I feel that, it, you know, you rely on a little bit more in some of those wins and losses. Altuve hit the ball hard a couple of times tonight. Nothing to show for it. That was a line drive to D Gordon the last at bat. He hit one to the wall and right. It's good to see Altuve driving the ball a little bit more. I think he would obviously like to see a little more of the power numbers. We all would because that leads to production and runs scored. But this guy right here, Carlos Correa, he's he's my he is the the linchpin in this offense. Nine wins that he's played in. He's hit 355 with six extra base hits and the nine runs scored. The OPS up over a thousand. When the team isn't going so well and those losses start to rack up, you hate to put it on one guy, but those numbers, there's a drastic difference between the wins and losses in numbers for Carlos Correa and the Houston Astros. And the numbers without him last year when he was on the DL bear that out as well. The Astros had their stretch there in August without Correa. That was by far their worst month of the season. Want to know the count? Correa has singled and struck out looking. 2 0. Oh. Still no bullpen action going for the Mariners, even though Paxton is approaching 100 pitches. Some guys starting to just get loose a little bit at this point. Strike, it's two and one. Good to hear from Julia. Last we heard, she was part of an investigation for a blown fuse down there. So maybe that's why we haven't heard from her. Apparently everything's okay. Jeez. That one bounces up there and catches Freight as the catcher. It's three and one. Catching looks like so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Freitas and Mike Marjama splitting the duties behind pl the plate because of the injury to Mike Zanino. Carlos can sit on one here at 3 1, and he drives one foul. Got a fastball at 95. I think he'd like to see that same pitch again. Just a hair late. Gets the barrel going just a little bit sooner. He launches that. Side, ball four. That is walk number three issued by Paxton. And Correa, a one out base runner. Our Shiner Box spotlight's going to fall on. Shiner Box spotlight, Yuli. Saturday night. Aggressive early in the count, hitting that first pitch fastball. And hey, why not go back to game five against. Clayton Kershaw taking that first pitch, tying things up in that big game five. Ooh, thought about it. He wanted to make, he wanted to pay off your Shiner Box spotlight, but it was a breaking ball. And it was but if that breaking zone. ball was in the strike zone, he would have launched. He would have hit it to where those guys are chanting A up there. Want to know the count to Yuli. And he takes another one. This time a strike. It's one and one. Astros with just their third hit. They have three hits rather and that was the third walk issue so they haven't had a whole lot of scoring opportunities. The three hits are by Correa Springer with singles and George with a home run and now Yuli bidding for one towards right center field. Hanniger runs over and makes a really nice play. Mitch Hanniger saves a run as Yuli had potential extra bases taken away. That was a huge play. That's that gap that I pointed to earlier in the game being wide open but Obviously Scott service and his group of geek squatters have him lined up where he wants them. And they understand the range factor that's out there and Mitch Hanniger did a great job of chasing that ball down. That was a valiant effort on what I thought was going to be a for sure double driving in a run. Nice play by Mitch Hanniger. 
showed you the defensive run save this outfield already at a plus five and we're only a couple of weeks into the season. Here's Evan Gaddis. I thought Gaddis had himself a good at bat last time even though he grounded out saw a lot of pitches from Paxton. Blummer mentioned got through some pitches and pulled them foul. Let's see if it pays off here as Paxton's over 100 pitches now 101. Doesn't chase there. Paxton threw 104 pitches in his first start of the year 102 in his last start. His high last season was 109 that came in July. Actually he did throw 114 earlier earlier in the season 25 percent catch probability on that. Not beat me to it. I was about to look it up. That's one of the best catches of the year. Yeah. See. Five star. Two and oh the count. Haniger covering a lot of ground in right field. They don't always have to be diving catches to be elite catches. No there was a pretty good distance traveled. Three and oh. Good take. Paxton felt like the second and third pitches could have been called strikes. Instead, Evan ahead 3 0. Oh. Evan looking for his first home run of the season. That one's on the corner at the knees. Last year, Gaddis hit 12 and 300 at bats. On the ground towards short, Segura to Cano, and that'll do it for the Astros in the sixth. A walk, a nice play in right field, and one man left on base. Don't miss the huge store-wide mattress sale going on now. And by Arctic, overbuilt, not overpriced. Dallas was ready to go with about 15 seconds left on the clock and just waited as David Freitas steps in there and swings and misses. Dallas on this cool night has been warming up quickly in between innings. Just 55 pitches needed through five. He has recorded 11 ground ball outs, including all three last inning. That one just missed the corner. It's one and one. Michael this year in his first start pitched six innings in Arlington, then five against the Orioles, and four last time out. 
That ball's hit well in the left field for a base hit. Marwin over to cut it off. Freight is the catcher thinking about two. Marwin with Correa cutting it off. Not able to get a lot on that throw. As Freitas has himself a leadoff double. Still a pretty good changeup from Dallas Keuchel. Freitas just did a good job of going down to get it. Stayed back. Kind of a looping uppercut swing. Yanks it down that left field line. And I'm not too sure the track out there in the outfield is in good shape. No. We saw D. Gordon slip a couple of times. Now we've seen Marwin Gonzalez have some issues. Oh, we're seeing outfielders really dig up the turf out there as they're trying to plant. Probably don't need a tarp here, but they have a roof that covers it, hopefully keeping the rain off it, but it really seems to be a soft track out there. Here's D. Gordon, corners in. And he swings and sends one towards right. Speaking of soft tracks, George slips. That's going to be a base hit. Freitas is going to score. Gordon in the second. It's 2-1 Mariners as Springer slipped going after that fly ball. I'm not sure he would have caught that, but at least he might have kept D. Gordon at first base. I think he may have caught it. He was playing in that left center field or right center field gap. Deep, too. Uh, maybe not. It was shallow. But he would have prevented a run from scoring. Prevented the run and kept D. Gordon at first base. How about the soft contact for Dallas Keuchel again, coming back to haunt him? There's, we've seen D. Gordon have a couple of wedges of turf slip under his feet. Now we've seen Marwin Gonzalez and George Springer on back to back hits to the outfield, where the turf is just not stable under their feet. Segura bounces one foul. And if it happens to you once, now it gets in your head a little bit. Got to lower that center of gravity in 2018. That soft contact rate way up for Dallas Keuchel to 31%. Unfortunately, it's taken some double plays away from him, and it's given some hits to hitters. Able to drop them in front of outfielders, and some of those ground balls even turning into infield hits. Some of Dallas's damage has been self-inflicted with the walks the last couple of starts, but a lot of it has been bad luck. He does not have with that soft contact rate much success all the time when guys don't hit the ball very hard. Segura showed bunt and shows it again. This time he bunts it foul. Dallas is over there as is Bregman. It's one and two. Bunting for a base hit, not a sacrifice. It ends up being a terrible bunt. It does end up being a sacrifice, but I like the idea of trying to bunt for a base hit. Create a first and third situation. On the ground, that'll keep the runner in second. Perea makes the throw to get Segura. And there's one out in sixth to validate what you were saying about Springer not being able to catch that ball. 92% hit probability. Even though 67.5 exit velocity, it was one of those balls that was perfectly placed with a 28 degree launch angle. Yeah, and we've talked to Darren Willman over the offseason, and he's, and according to these hit probabilities, some of the higher hit probabilities have the least amount of exit velocity and launch angles. They just drop in that no man's land between the infielder and outfielder. But it probably, as you said, would have been first and third. Who knows what happens there if they get a double play out of that ground ball. That would have been the ground ball double play hit hard. They probably would have been able to turn that. Here's Robinson Cano taking a strike. So unfortunate for Dallas, but he has to work through a runner on second base, a run in in this two to one game. Cano is grounded a short and grounded back to Keuchel. James Paxton night should be done as he was over 100 pitches last inning. Nick Vincent has been warming up in the Mariners bullpen. Mariners with four hits, Astros with three. They really handled Robinson last year. 
had to. The year before was not pretty. Oof. Big split difference from 2016 to 17. Nine home runs in 2016. Watch out, foul. It's one and two. Cano coming into this game with an OPS of 1,012 on the season. Now he's in the top six in the American League. Strikeout for Keuchel since back in the third inning, his fourth of the game. <laughs> Time to play Name That Astro, brought to you by Nissan. Who am I? Tonight's clues are this Hall Pass, Award Winner, One Crazy Summer. You can tweet your guesses to at ATT Sportsnet SW. So the one guy in this lineup. And it's hit the ball very hard twice against Dallas Keuchel's at the plate now, Nelson Cruz. First base is open. I was thinking the same thing. That Nelson Cruz may not see a strike in this at bat. Going to try and work off the edges and see if he can create a pitch that looks good enough for Nelson Cruz to swing and not square up. Might be tough to do. Cruz hit a ball 115 miles an hour at Carlos Correa and then hit one over the wall and left his next at bat. And Dallas with his pinpoint control is able to work around the plate if he chooses. And so far he's 2 0 on Cruz. may have expanded but I also think it's an understanding of Nelson Cruz knowing that Dallas is going to stay on that outer third or away from him because you can see him kind of letting that ball travel and trying to drive it to that right field side. on deck. Fancy and Keiko having it's trouble in this AB getting on the same page. That is one he doesn't mind. Rather face the left hand hitting Kyle Seeger. He's gotten him a couple times already tonight. First AB looking strikeout on a fastball, well located, and then a ground ball to Carlos Correa. Now you've got a first and third situation. Max Dassey's looking into the dugout for signs because you've got D. Gordon at second base who can flat out fly, already has seven bags on the season. Nelson Cruz at second base. So if there is a double steal situation, that sign is indicating what base they're going to go to. And considering this situation, I would imagine it's second base if Nelson Cruz takes off. First pitch is Seeger is a strike. T. Gordon in the top eight 
in the StatCast Sprint Speed leaderboard. Leading Major League Baseball in steals, as Blummer mentioned. 0 oh 2. So after a pitch around to Cruz, Keichel ahead 0 oh 2 on Seeger. Only the guy that's tied for first on the sprint leaderboard, along with Byron Buxton, Billy Hamilton ahead of him in steals. Dallas misses the edge there. It's 1 and 2. Dallas has thrown 20 pitches in this inning. His highest pitch count of any inning tonight. Two and two. Fighting out of damage, but still looks poised. Still not making many mistakes. Couple of soft hits. Led to that run. According to his run support, two runs might be enough. For Seattle to win this ball game, you'd like to see the offense break out. Still waiting for it. Cole, third strike. Beautiful. Gets the outside corner. Seager goes down looking. Dallas with two strikeouts in the inning, five in the game, and we head to the seventh. Two one, Seattle lead. piece of jewelry from the Jostens World Championship collection available at the ballpark and online all season. The collection features pieces for women, men, and children. For more info, visit Astros.com slash the ring. TK. All right, Julia. We head to the seventh inning tonight at Safeco Field in Seattle. First game of this seven game road trip. Not a lot of offense for either side. It is 2 1 Seattle and they go to a new pitcher coming out of the bullpen is Nick Vincent. Nick Vincent coming on to relieve James Paxson who pitched a strong six innings only given up one earned run on the season seven appearances for Nick Vincent 4.76 ERA he is a fastball cut fastball guy cutter comes in there at 87 miles an hour the fastball at 89 throws that cut fastball around 60 percent of the time. Cutter mania from Nick Vincent. As he'll face Marwin Gonzalez, Max Stassi, and Jake Marisnik to start the seven. Marwin is fly to center and grounded out. There's that cutter in. Marwin swings through it. It's 0 2. In the last year, 29 holds, second most in the majors behind Taylor Rogers. This is third game in a row. Vincent pitched a third of an inning Saturday, and then finished off the game last night. 
yesterday afternoon I should say so. He's been used a lot this week as has Edwin Diaz Diaz pitched in four straight games for the Mariners. It was an off day in the middle but four out of five days. He is the closer for Seattle. I'll tell you what one thing we learned about Scott service if he has an opportunity to win he is going to blow out that bullpen he is going to use every one of them every chance he's got. I saw a stretch last season. He had guys that were going four or five days in a row. Diaz was one of them. Yep. There's a called strike. It's the outside corner for the first out of the seventh inning. Astros did some damage against the Mariners bullpen last season. Altavila was in that mix getting hit pretty hard. Nick Vincent. All those stats were here at Safeco Field last year. Here's Max Stassi on the inside corner with a strike. Astros have a five game winning streak on the line at Safeco Field. They have won six overall against the Mariners. Swing and a miss, 0 and 2. Stassi has struck out a couple of times tonight. Paxton goes six innings tonight. Allowed three hits. Walked three, struck out seven. Stassi pops one up. Robinson Cano doesn't have to move far. And that's out number two. League leaders are presented by Houston Methodist. Astros last year scored a lot of runs on the road. Many more runs on the road than at home. And since the beginning of last year, nobody even close to what the Astros have done in terms of scoring runs per game away from Minute Maid Park. But tonight it's been a struggle, just three hits and a run. As Jake Marisnik takes a pitch for a ball. Last time the Astros scored two in their first game on the road against Minnesota, then just one in the middle game before coming back with an eight spot in that final Wednesday afternoon game at Target Field. But they were down 8 1 in that game, tied it at 8 before Max Kepler walked it off with a home run in the bottom half of the ninth. Jake is 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. And he hits the ball hard towards right. Hanniger is there, though, and makes the catch for the final out of the inning. Nick Vincent comes on in the seventh and has a 1 2 3 inning, seventh inning stretch time at Safeco Field. Let's send it to Kevin Eschenfelder and Mike Stanton in our rooms to go lounge as we head to the bottom of the seventh.
is presented by Ford. Big week for Justin Verlander, earned himself Player of the Week honors in the American League. 0.60 ERA in two starts, racking up plenty of punch outs. As a matter of fact, in two starts, he went 1-0 and had 20 punch outs. Only two walks during that span. Gave up just five hits, one earned run and 15 innings pitched. Had everything working. Not normally a guy who comes out of the gates firing, but here in 2018 at the ripe age of 35, he's doing a great job for the Houston Astros early. Uh, he and Dallas Keuchel have kind of reversed their roles. Keuchel normally a guy who comes out of the gate strong, and this year, at least up until tonight, we had not seen the normal Dallas Keuchel April. He has been on point tonight, even though he's down two to one in this game in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Verlander, on the other hand, that's always been his worst month, the first month of the season. But what a start he's off to in 2018. Mitch Hanniger leads things off. Number six hitter in the lineup, followed by Guillermo Haredi and Taylor Modern. Dallas has missed with the first three in this inning. TK to add on what you guys were talking about with Verlander he he did say that's you know the weakness of his career is April it's that start and so this spring paid a lot of attention to detail more so than he has before he said usually he's more worried about getting his arm ready and how he feels this year he was just paying more attention to detail and, and that's what he wanted to do to look at things that he had success with late in last season of course we got to see that firsthand and applied it to early this season and feels really good about where he is right now and he should because he usually gets stronger as the season goes along so if he's out to a good April that's not good news for the rest of the league. <laughs> Verlander has a career ERA coming into this season of four in April. Here's a ball in the right center field. Springer on the move, and he's going to play it on one bounce. Heredia takes the turn, heading to second. George's throw a little bit high. Heredia in safe. Good effort by Springer, but Heredia with us. One out, double in the seventh. You could almost see it in the way George went after that baseball that he's tiptoeing out there. Again, we've seen the turf out there not be really conducive to making some strong moves. The choppy steps, still some earth coming up as he's chopped the steps, trying to make a good throw in there. Ball's down, it might be a different story on Heredia. But good base running by Heredia. You've got to challenge the defense. And there's really nothing you could do. It's not the footwear, it's just the, the field surface that they're playing on tonight. That's giving way at various points in the outfield. Taylor Moner takes a strike. Well, if he gets aggressive and, and snipers and falls down and allows Haredi to get an extra base, that you know you can't do something like that. Dallas is sitting right now at 83 pitches. The bullpen has not thrown a pitch all night for the Astros. Oh, one pitch is up. It's one and one. Deep in the hole, underneath the glove of Correa. Heredia heading to third. Marwin, a quick throw, just safe. Is Heredia third? Almost got caught trying to advance from second to third on that single to left. Would have liked to have seen Alex Bregman on the outfield side of the bag and maybe catch that ball a little bit quicker and get the tag on Heredia. He was on the infield side. Hard to believe with all the action, one actually got past Carlos Correa, but Alex Bregman didn't try and close the space in between himself and Marwin Gonzalez. And that ball just traveling an extra three or four feet allowed Heredia to get in. Actually, pretty lucky it didn't hit Heredia and Ricochet somewhere. Motter with his second hit of the night. And now second and first and third with. One out. Astros could use a double play with the number nine hitter Freitas batting. Takes a pitch to the side for ball one. 12,923 on this chilly Monday evening in Seattle. Freitas doubled to left his last time up. He also struck out his first time. The pitch was close, but. Called a ball. Now, if Bregman is lined up on this side, he's going to catch that ball a little bit sooner. Be able to see it on our mattress from Supermo. If he catches it sooner and tags Heredia, 
maybe get the out, but that was actually a pretty impressive catch in between the legs. have been at a premium for the Astros offense so he's trying to keep this right where it is now at two to one. Swing and a miss he gets Bredis for the second time tonight. Keiko with six strikeouts now and a big one there. Runners remain on the corner is now two away in the seventh. D. Gordon, the batter, doubled his last time on a ball that George Springer lost his footing going after a little flare in the right. He's grounded out a couple of times. On the ground, Yuli has it. He'll take it himself, and Dallas works out of a jam. Nicely done by Keuchel. We head to the eighth. It's still two to one. By TXU. Pretty easy call on a night where the Astros have only put one run across the board. And it was the first hitter of the game, George Springer, hitting a blast off of James Paxton, trying to ignite this offense. Trying to get on base for somebody else to drive him in. Did a good job in his third AB, getting the base hit the other way with a little soft contact in comparison to the rocket he hit in his first AB. It's perfect on the night. Two hits and a walk. Trying to get something going here. Yeah, not much for the Astros offensively since that leadoff home run. A single by Correa later on in that inning, and then a single by Springer in the fifth. Paxton would walk three while he was in there. A one, two, three, seventh for Nick Vincent, and now Juan Nicasio comes on in the eighth. Out of that bullpen, another guy who's made seven appearances. We talked about Scott Service pretty willing to go to that bullpen when he can. Inflated ERA. Nicasio is a fastball slider guy. Averaging 93 on that heater. Throw a few more sliders to right hand hitters like George Springer. He starts them off with one there. It's 0 1. 
George has been on base all three times home run walk in a single. Astros down two to one another low scoring game. Last night they were tied at one heading into the extra innings. There's a called strike. George down 0 and 2. You see the pitch usage this year. Extreme high percentage of fastballs when he faces a left hand hitter. And a few more sliders when he faces a righty. Over 80% four seamers against left hand hitters. Facing Springer, Bregman, and Altuve in this inning. There's that slider. It's one and two. Casio last year pitched for three National League teams, mostly with the Pirates. Claimed off waivers by the Phillies, only made a couple of appearances with Philadelphia, and then he was traded to the Cardinals for the remainder of the year. Can't field it, but Cano is there, and he was able to get Springer for the first out of the eight. <laughs> Mentioned that Scott Service likes to call on his bullpen. 76 appearances for Nicasio last year, tied for the National League lead and a career high. Here's Bregman. Alex looking for his first hit of the night. Got robbed on a great play by Kyle Seeger on a slow chopper on the infield. Coming into this game through 16 games, the Astros in 2017. And 2018 had scored the exact same number of runs. Last year, the Astros were a little bit better by a game, 11 and 5 instead of 10 and 6. But both teams had scored 67 runs through 16 games. But at this point, moving forward, if the Astros don't pick up the offense. They're going to start to fall behind that pace because the 27 team started to pick it up right around now. Lately, as we showed you early in the game, the split between the first six and the last ten are not good. The last ten games, the Astros have the lowest OPS in baseball. And that just doesn't make sense with this lineup. These guys are too good. Same guys. Yeah. It's not like they traded away anybody, or obviously Beltron retired, but. And the league's going to make adjustments, but I still feel that these guys are talented and smart enough to go out there and make the adjustment to what's being made to them. Bregman in the air to center field. D. Gordon drifts back. Two outs in the eighth. Time to name that Astro. Brought to you by Nissan. We asked you this question: Who am I? Hall Pass Award winner. One crazy summer. You send your guesses to at ATT Sportsnet SW. Big unit. Randy Johnson came over from the Mariners to the Astros in 1998. Remarkable numbers that year with Houston. Verlander kind of made him forget about that trade a little bit, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> they had the high expectations on that trade in 1998. Kevin Brown showed up. And totally redeemed themselves last year with picking up Justin Verlander. Uh, it's been fun to watch Verlander in an Astros uniform. He has been gold. Got to wear that gold uniform to the Astros the first two home games of the year. Morton started the first game and Verlander started the second game. Here's Altuve facing Juan Nicasio with two outs and nobody on. Astros haven't had a whole lot of base runners. Nobody has a hit since Springer's single in the fifth. Correa drew a walk in the sixth. Two. Two base hit the ball hard his last two times. 
comes up. He flied out to the wall and right in the third and lined out to center his last time. Into center, on comes Gordon, and the Astros go down one, two, three. Eight in a row sent down by the Mariners. We head to the bottom of the eighth in a 2 1 game. Game. It's time for the Miller Lite hold true moment. The defense is good behind Dallas Keuchel. They're on their toes. They're ready to go because they know that they're going to have some opportunities. A lot of ground balls when Dallas Keuchel is on the mound, and a lot of them going towards Carlos Correa, who's showing off some serious athletic ability, physical talent, able to pick up his buddy on the mound, picking up seven ground ball outs already for Dallas Keuchel, and he's back on the mound too. And Dallas pitching into the eighth as he faces the two, three, four hitters for the Mariners Gene Segura, Robinson Cano, Nelson Cruz. Segura's grounded out the short a couple of times and popped to Altuve. In the air in the right center field, Springer comes on, makes the play. Jake may have slipped in that first step from center field as he tore up a divot and Springer saying I see that's what I was doing. It's a mess out there. Quagmire. You know what's great about Dallas going this deep in the ball game. And what's great about the Astros rotation that we talked about already in the open is that these guys are putting up very good numbers to start. But the biggest number I think that A.J. Hinch loves the fact and I'm sure with Dallas going in here in the eighth inning is that they're coming into this game they were averaging almost six innings pitched per start and that does wonders for your bullpen really lengthens them out and creates depth if you can end the season with 900 plus innings out of your starting rotation <laughs> and you're setting yourself up for good things and when you average six that's over 960 Correa is going to take it in front of Altuve and make a low throw picked by Yuli Gurriel. Nice job by Yuli on another assist by Carlos Gray. He's been busy out there with Keuchel on the mound. Eight assists for Correa tonight. It's pretty impressive. He has been hyperactive out there on defense and ranging to his left. A couple of plays right at him, ranging to his right. Yuli picking him up. Here's the one guy that's been the problem for Dallas tonight, Nelson Cruz. He walked him, even though it was an unintentional walk. He definitely pitched around him last time with the runner on second and two outs. We'll see how he attacks him here. Mentioned last inning, the bullpen's been completely quiet tonight as Dallas gets in on his hands. Correa and Marwin. It's Marwin who calls off the shortstop, and Dallas gets through the eighth in one, two, three fashion. Astros need at least one. Two to take the lead.
the biggest game in Astros history, but Charlie Morton is staying humble. We'll also show you the Astros customized gloves, all that and more on Astros bases loaded Fridays before pregame and re-airing all week long only on AT&T Sportsnet. TK. All right, Julian, we go to the ninth inning in this two to one game. The Astros will have Carlos Correa, Yuli Gurriel, Evan Gaddis do up, and they face the closer for the Mariners, the youngster Edwin Diaz. Youngster's got a great arm. Averages 97 and a half miles an hour on the fastball, has a put away slider. Relied on heavily out there in that Seattle bullpen. Seven games this season, six saves and six opportunities. 14 punch outs in seven innings, only one walk. Great numbers in his career with those six saves. He now has 58 saves. In addition to the one walk, he's only allowed one hit all season. He has been as dominant a closer as there has been this season. As he faces the Astros, trying to preserve this two to one lead. He has hit a couple of batters, and he's in on the hands of Correa for ball one. It's not comfortable anytime, but especially on a cold night with 96 bearing in on you. James Paxton six innings a one two three seven for Nick Vincent a one two three eight for Juan Nicasio and now Edwin Diaz Correa fouls one away. Fastball slider guy. Use that fastball to get ahead and then put away slider. Forty two percent to righties. A little less to lefties. He gets a lot of. Swinging strikes with that slider. There it is. Carlos doesn't chase. It's two and one. Correa single, a walk. He's also struck out officially one for two. He and Springer have been on base five times. The rest of the seven have only been on once. Now Correa with a three and one count. Mentioned service used Diaz in four straight games, used him Tuesday and Wednesday. Had an off day Thursday, used him again Friday and Saturday. Did not use him in yesterday's game. This is five times in a week that Diaz is being used, and that is a walk to start the inning. Tying run on base to start the ninth. 2018 Astros Buddies memberships presented by BBVA Compass are now available for kids 12 and under. Buddies receive four game tickets to an Astros regular season game, a backpack, cap, socks, exclusive benefits throughout the year for only 25 bucks plus tax. Visit Astros.com slash buddies to sign up today. Here's Yuli Gurriel up and into Yuli. He has a 24 year old has not been able to find the plate with five of his first six pitches. Billy was robbed on a great catch by Mitch Hanniger his last time up. What well, could have given the Astros a two to one lead at that point. And he hits a line drive but it's towards D Gordon who gets back on it and makes the play. Billy hit the ball hard but at the center fielder for the first out of the ninth. Great swing by Yuli, nothing to show for it. Fastball up in the zone. He did a good job of getting the hands above the baseball again and driving it to center field. Unfortunately, nothing to show for it. That positioning by the Mariners outfield, perfect. Evan Gaddis due up. Josh Reddick is going to get a pinch hit appearance. Reddick will pinch hit as the DH facing the right hander Edwin Diaz. Josh takes a call strike. Josh had the first hit of the game last night for the Astros breaking up the Bartolo Colon no hitter in the eighth inning. Colon had gone seven innings of perfect baseball before walking Carlos Correa. Josh has faced Diaz twice. He has struck out both times.
Diaz gets him swinging. Two outs in the ninth. Houston Astros baseball on AT&T Sportsnet is brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Jack in the Box. Try the new Cholula Butter Jack, part of the Buttery Jack family. Diaz will now face Marwin Gonzalez. Batting left-handed. 0 for 3 tonight. Marwin takes a strike. Marwin. Diaz is feeling good about that slider. First pitch slider to Marwin down the zone. Great pitch to get ahead. Marwin one for three against Diaz. Brian McCann on deck if a Marwin reaches base. There goes Correa. The pitch is outside. The throw bounces in there. Correa is now in scoring position. That's a big steal. Tying run now in scoring position. Second steal of the season for Carlos. Matches his total from last year. That was almost like a pitch out. It was a mini pitch out, yep. Better throw might get him. So now the Astros just need a hit to the outfield. As aggressive as Pettis, Gary Pettis is at third base. More than likely he would send Correa as the tying run. Freitas is out there to try and ice Diaz. <laughs> I'm not sure <laughs> why he's out there so long. I'm sure they're going over signs with the runner now at second base. Make sure they get on the same page. But if I'm catching Edwin Diaz right now, I'm making it pretty snappy so I can get behind home plate and put down that slider sign. Just one hit allowed all season by Diaz. In seven and two thirds innings. This one bounces up there. Good block by Freitas. It's two and one. I know at home and even sitting up here it's easy to see that slider coming out breaking down and in but as quickly as that pitch is coming to the plate it is tough to register that that slider down and in is going to continue to break down and in instinct tells you to swing at it. In a perfect world you'd like to see that slider elevated. Much like that. He's had some tough luck his last two at bats. Astros with just one run on three hits tonight. Mariners pitching has walked four, including Correa on second. Robinson Cano calling time. He wants to talk to Diaz. And that'll draw Freitas out to join the conversation. Should have drawn Freitas out immediately because usually when a middle infielder comes towards the mound, maybe. They picked up on something or there's something going on with the signs. Two and two the count to Marwin. See if Marwin reaches. Yeah. Edwin Diaz remains perfect on the season. He does 
not allow a hit in the inning. He is now seven for seven in the save opportunities. And the Mariners win the first game of this four game series by the final score of two to one. Dallas Keuchel ends up getting a complete game out of it, but not the way he would like, as he is the losing pitcher despite only allowing two. We'll have more, including the post game show, right around the corner.